Jesus' name. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to all of them, even you. <laughs> amazing, your wife, tremendous, always in the background, but amazing. We love you guys. And then the young, this, Mo, uh, this is uh, Joshua, no, Moses and Joshua, Roy Joshua. <laughs> He's a fireball. They're both fireballs when they preach passion. That's what you sense, and God used them in a tremendous way. But you both, they both have something in common. And you might wonder, what is that? Do they like golf or golfing or uh, what's it, ball, throwing balls around? Bowling. No, they have passion for the lost. Always want to reach out and touch somebody. Plans are made how to reach the community, both of them, along with their wives. And we, we thank you that you're obeying God and hearing the voice of God. We're living in desperate times, amen? And then, uh, uh, least but not, I got the older brother here today. When I was standing next to him there holding his hand, and I told Miss Carol, I said, I have to preach good because George is here. <laughs> He's got a notebook and said, no, 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 you went too long or you went too short. You, you're stepping too much on people's toes. And, but he does the same. I've copied him. <laughs> <laughs> his wife, uh, Cecilia, still Cecilia? Yeah. His first wife and last wife. Uh, that's their oldest grandson and the young lady that he thinks he likes a lot. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Brownwin is here. Happy birthday, Brownwin. My wife is here. Uh, oh, yeah. And then and I will get the last to Greg because I've, I've got a long thing to tell about Greg. He was a troublemaker in the family as we grew up. <laughs> uh, Jeannie, God bless you. Michael, my. Only begotten and only and loving son. Very good boy. Nadine, we're glad you're here with your, uh, with your sister's son. Matthew. I told Matthew yesterday, do you know you're in the Bible? He said, really? <laughs> no, he knew, he knew. They were raised right. And everyone else I didn't mention. Melissa, still as pretty as when she was just a little girl. So I said, if you have the good looks, you still keep it. <laughs> I've lost mine. <laughs> but uh, I sense the Holy Spirit in this place. Anyone I missed out? Did I miss you? Jeannie is my, my rectifier. Uh, Paul Daniel. Oh, I thought there was somebody. <laughs> Paul Daniel. Paul Daniel. <laughs> He's in, busy in the Lord's stuff, you know, the game, game boy. So, so, Pastor, thank you. Appreciate it. And Miss Carol for praying for me always, and uh, for Roy and for Pastor. I love, you. I love these people. Great people in this church. You're a great man, sir. You know why? Because you made a decision years ago to serve the Lord. You had to make a choice. I will serve the Lord. May the world have all the pleasures and the treasures. But give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give the Lord a praise. And you and you and you and you and you and everyone else. God bless you, Danny. And uh, my sister's not here today. Rose is here. I'm going to call her as soon as church is over and call Rosalind. Because she brings a certain presence, you know. I'll see what's going on there. <laughs> Hello, Dan. Second Chronicles chapter 20. The heading says, Jehoshaphat defeats Moab and Ammon. Several nations came to bring destruction to Israel and Judah, Jerusalem, in that vicinity there, years back. And what I've noticed, the previous chapter, this is chapter 20, Brother George, Verse 1. But the previous chapter, chapter 19, a little, little story there about Joseph that brought a whole nation back to God. And I call that revival. When a whole nation fall on their faces before God and leave the idols behind, leave the world behind and make a decision, we will serve the God of Israel. We want to see it again. And I give you permission, can I, can I use my authority? You may say amen if it's a good word. The church has become too quiet. When we first came several years ago, we saw the signs in most of the churches outside. Silence, church. Mistake. The church should be the most liveliest place under the sun. There must be a noise of victory. There must be a shout of victory in the name of Jesus. For he has done great things. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's, he has not changed yet. So they came to war, wage war against 
Josephat and his people of Israel. I'm going to read a little bit. Some people came and told Josephat, a vast army is coming against you. The enemy is not for you, but he's against you. He wants to see your destruction. He wants to see your fall, your demise. But then Jesus comes along and he offers hope and life. Amen. 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 They came and said, a vast army, not a little one, a big, enormous army is coming against you from En Gedi, from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. They have one thing in their mind, on their mind, destroy Israel and his king. Alarmed, something resonated with Jehoshaphat. And the Bible used the word, the New NIV says, alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. What an amazing decision he made. He was strong. He won battles, victories. But this one was going to be different. And immediately, he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah and Jerusalem or Israel. De declared, when, there's, when you have your back against the wall, when the church is going through something, when you as an individual are facing the hardest battle of your life, begin looking, looking to God. Look at Him. Turn to Him. And begin to fast and pray. And something will happen. I'll preach to that and George will remember better than me. He's a little older than me. Is it right, Cecilia? Right. I used to go with him when he went to visit Cecilia there in South Africa. And I had to drive for him. And I just meant his eyes were just sparkling. And I <laughs> Our preacher dad firmly believed in fasting and prayer. Do you believe in fasting and prayer? And he used to tell us, boys, full-time workers, we must sacrifice the flesh. We must bring the flesh under because there's a war raging between good and evil. And if you want to see the hand of God move, if we want to see the miraculous Bow low, go in the presence of God. Begin to seek His face. Put the food aside. Sacrifice the flesh and go after God. Dad would fast for days and sometimes for weeks. Mom fasted. The children all fasted. He would say, it's time to crucify the flesh. Repent and seek the face of God. We heard it so many times. That was, that's why we are angels today. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but, but we saw a difference in the meetings, in our crusades, the big tents. The miraculous was there. God's hand, the power of the Holy Ghost, came to heal the sick, liberated the captives. I remember one time there was a lady on a bed dying. They brought her every day, every morning service, every night. Next day the same, dad would lay hands on her. But one day, one day, one day. They took her home a week, actually a couple of weeks later, we went to another crusade. And here comes a lady, McGregor's. She stopped the truck. It's in a village with the tents. Said, do you remember me? No. I'm the lady on the bed that was carried in every day. The next day when I got up, I was completely made whole. God is still a healer. I want to share with you this morning or tell you that. God has not changed his mind. What he said, he will do. He will bring it to pass. Cities were shaken. Is it right, Brother George? Cities. We came with the tents. And uh, people would come. Revivals continued for sometimes a month, two months, three months. No stop in sight. People would come in the day, book their seats. They put a blanket there under the tent chair. God moved. When we begin to seek his face and sacrifice a self and the lust of the flesh. If we get serious enough about the things of God, he will show up again. He will show up again. Amen. Verse 4, the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat, verse 5 says, And Jehoshaphat stood up in the, in the assembly of, the, of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, he actually prayed, he said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, 
Are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand. And no one can withstand you. This is not a story. It's a reality. The power of God is real. It's real in your life. We need to activate that power like never before. And I believe we're going to challenge you today not to settle for the little. Go all the way. Go for the highest. Go for the deepest. Go for the fire of God. Paul Daniel, Paul, his dad used to say, Paul Daniel say, fire of God. And he shouted all of us, fire of God. We need the fire of the Holy Ghost. We need the power of God. Amen. You are awfully quiet. Miss Carol, you are awesomely quiet. <laughs> and he goes on, Joseph had quoting, he says this, he remembered. Our oh God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this, this land before your people and give, it, and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? Your friend. He's our friend. <laughs> Rather be his friend than his enemy. You're going to be in trouble if you're his enemy. I'd rather be his friend. Say, God, I surrender. I, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. He goes on to say, they have, in, they have lived in this, in this land, you, and you have built a sanctuary for the glory of your name. Verse 9 says, and if calamity comes upon us, it will come. Whether the sword of judgment, the plague of famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress. And you will hear. You will hear us and will save. Not maybe, not perhaps. You will hear us and save. Friend, God will hear us. He will hear us when we cry. Even the faintest cry, loud or soft, he will hear, hear our cry and come toward us. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call upon me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He's going to surprise us. You're looking for God's phone number? Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call upon the name of the Lord. Stop calling the negative things. Call upon the name of the Lord and he will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. That thou knowest not. It was a fact that they were outnumbered. Several nations came. They were outnumbered. And many times we feel that way. There's no way out. With your back against the wall. How am I going to handle this onslaught? This sickness? This disease? This thing that's been, that has struck my family? I cannot do it, oh God. But he can. In the natural it was... Hopeless situation. But he said, he goes on to say, in spite of what we see, in spite of, in spite of what you feel, but our eyes are on you. Where is your eyes tomorrow, this morning? Where have you turned to when you had a desperate situation? You looked here. You blamed the government. You blamed the church. You blame others. Everything I blame. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on the Lord. The moment Peter took his eyes off of the Lord, he failed. He sank. He said, keep your eyes on the Lord. And as soon as he looked away, that's a, don't look away. Don't look away. So all the men of Judah with their wives and children, all of them, all, all. My dad used to bring all of us in there. No, 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 no. Come on, put the books down. Put your games down. Put, put, oh, we didn't have games those years. Maybe toys, cars, broken stuff. A hand, or hand, hand off, yeah. Because my dad was full time. Just come and we're going to pray. We're going to seek the Lord. The mo and all the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood before the Lord. They stood before. They came together. It was a desperate situation. What happened next will blow your mind. It will make you shout. And I want you to shout. At the words of Jehaziel. Out of the blue. He's in the, among them, them. And God begin to use this young man as a prophet. There's many prophets today, and people want to hear a nice thing. How blessed I'm going to be. I'm going to win the lottery. Woo, I'm going to get a BMW. <laughs> or, a, or I don't know, some people like drive nice cars, God bless you. I'm going to have this, and the biggest house, everything of the best. 
But what if he says, repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out? God is watching you. Turn your life around. But the prophet says here a word. He, says, uh, he spoke actually a prophetic word. Not to please him, but in this case, listen, listen to what he says. He spoke by the Holy Spirit. So even the Holy Spirit was evident. He became the mouthpiece of God. Danny, you can become God's mouthpiece. When you find this route or this road to success, seeking the face of God, hearing from God, truly hearing from God, you feel it in your bones, in your spirit. And this young man had the audacity to say, Listen! Listen, all you people, and you, Jehoshaphat, king. This is what God is saying, not man. I'm not saying this. All who live in Judah and in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. To you. Don't duck now. It's to you. <laughs> For the battle is not yours. Don't be afraid of this or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours but the Lord's. But tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing by the paths of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jehur. You will not have to fight this battle. Whew. So we can lay down our weapons, our swords, our natural weapons, our methods, our ways. You don't have to fight this battle. You will not have to fight this battle. Take Only take up your positions. Stand firm. Stand still. And see the deliverance of the Lord that he will give us. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow. And the Lord will be with you. The Lord says to us this morning, I'm, I've got about three more pages, but I'm going to cut it right here. I feel I need more energy. <laughs> but I, need, I feel the word is strong enough. First stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And then this battle of cancer, this battle of depression, this battle of drugs that has ruined your life, that has robbed you of the blessings of God, this, this fight that you've had, with your children, with your loved ones, with your marriage. This time, this time, just show up. Come to church. Come into his presence. Because God is going to fight this battle for you. It relates to this song we sang this morning, or a little earlier. I march into battle, no doubt in my mind. That my God is with me. And victory is mine. T -t totally. I dance in the shadows of my enemy. Before I forget, they, sh they went, I'll continue with this, as the man of God said, the king said, they showed up, and he called some of the people, said, now you, your job is just to lead them in worship, praise the Lord, there's power in praise, when the worship leader tells you, come on, lift your hands, come on. Bible says one day, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So while you can, lift up your hands. He's your Savior. He's your Lord. He's your Redeemer. And He's your soon coming King. Because God is my champion. He'll fight for me. Oh, God is my champion. He'll fight for me. The bigger the battle, the greater my faith. There is no giant you cannot slay. You're stronger than 10,000 armies. He goes on, twice he said it. No weapon against me will prosper or stand. No weapon, when you pray, this is how you have to pray. No weapon will stand against me or prosper. In the name of Jesus, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Show up, O oh God. Your promises, you promise that you will never leave me nor forsake me. Because I've got a promise from, from the Son of Man, God, Jesus. I throw off my armor. I don't need that. But put on the full armor. <laughs> and raise up my hands. I know my God, I know who I am. I know my God, and I know who I am. I know my God, I know who I am. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid. Tell every giant, get out of my way. In the name of Jesus, declare right now, giant of sickness, get out of my way. Say it, say it loud. Giant of sickness, 
Get, repeat what I say strong. D giant of depression, get out of my way. J giant of migraine headaches, get out of my way. Doctors reports it says negative things about you. Get out of my way. I know who my God is and I know whom I serve. Know who you are in Christ Jesus and know who you serve. Are you excited this morning? I think we must continue tonight, but we'll stop right here. Brother Roy, would you come? Yes. I dotted a couple of things down. The main, main points there were, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The, the man of God, he decided, I'm not going to go to the other kings for help. He resolved to go after God. What must I do? He said, God is my helper. God is my redeemer. He's my rock. He's my salvation. He's everything I need. He fights my battles. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise. A big one, a big one, a big one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. You, my friend, will never be the same again. Put Jesus first in your life. First. Stand still. Why? You're too busy sometimes. Get into God's presence. Stand. Stop where you are. And see, open your eyes, look over there. They saw the mighty army. See the salvation. Salvation means the victory, the breakthrough. How God will come through for you and me. See the salvation of the Lord. And these armies of, of, of uh, Egypt that's now trying to pursue you and overtake you and take you back captive. This is the last day you'll see them. You'll never see them again. You'll never see that devils again. You'll never... Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, my friend. And, and God gave them a supernatural victory. With Jehoshaphat, when they begin to worship, God came through angels from heaven. And the captain of the armies of the Lord, Jesus Christ himself, I can imagine coming with that sword. And, and as he just, he didn't even touch them. As he waved it, they died by their thousands. Heaps and heaps of the enemy. The enemy is going to fall. God is going to give you the victory. In the name of Jesus. Would you stand on your feet all over this house? Today? Woo! Pastor, look over there, 11.30. I'm the new champion. <laughs> Glory to God. Just raise your hands all over this house. We don't settle to be ordinary. Christian by label only. But are you really a Christian? Are you a follower of Christ? Are you a disciple denying everything else and say, I have decided to follow Jesus? No turning back, no turning back. My heart it belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a warrior. I listen to when God tells me to do something. I obey His words. And I'm falling in love with Him all over again. Raise your hands, raise your hands. Just raise your hands. Means raise your hands. Not to me. Lift your hands. Half, halfway is fine too. Right high or low. And just with your eyes closed, say this, this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Say this prayer out to me, dear Lord Jesus. You see, when you say Lord, it's either, George, Lord of all or not at all. Which one? Say Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. My Savior. My Savior. My Deliverer. Deliverer. My Healer. My King. My Savior. My, 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 my soon coming King. I bow in your presence. And I raise my hands to you in surrender. I give you my heart in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We're going to pray for people. Pastor, I want you to come. If you have some, some of the helpers to come, men of God, come stand over here. We're going to anoint your hands with oil. Pastor Roy, are you going to help us? Yes. They're going to, Greg is going to sing a song with the team. Danny is here. George, you want to help us? Cecilia, Jeannie, all the other men of God. Come. Maybe, maybe you're not, you serve the Lord, but this is just to get a fresh touch from the Lord. Where you are able to be a champion too. David was a young man when God called him. He became a, became a champion for the Lord. 
powerful, anointed. That's what we need. Doesn't matter size. With God in us, God doesn't look at the outward appearance or what, whatever you are, how beautiful you are, how not too beautiful you are, how short you are, how tall you are. He will use you this morning. If you want to be used of God, if you want that weapons to, 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 be, to be released, mighty weapons, more powerful than the USA's weapons, more powerful. Mountains move when He speaks. That's the God I'm talking about. We want to lay hands on you for prayer, for strength, for victory in this battle. And by the way, Joseph had with his people got the biggest victory they've ever had over their enemies. God destroyed them all. You are victorious. You declare it this morning, I'm victorious. Right now, sing this song. Yeah.